Hello, my name is Max and welcome to this tutorial today where we're going to program a simple snake game using JavaScript and HTML. Before we get started, I just want to go to some basic snake game theory and the data structures we're going to use when we're going to program the game. So to start off, I, the, I always want to describe the grid data structure. So it's useful in games where the game world is confined in sized chunks of data information. In our example, that will be the game, uh, game board. That will be represented with a grid data structure, and in each cell we can have an ID what that cell contains, and by drawing different uh, sized uh, colored boxes, uh, uh, depending on what is the ID in that particular cell is, we can get a graphic representation of the game, and we can rep represent it in numerous ways. In an example, we use a two D array. So this is the example I was talking about. So this is the data structure of the grid. And on the right here, you can see the graphic representation. And then, by shifting position of different elements in the grid, for example, this zero here and this one here, we can make the snake move in this in this fashion here. And by doing that process, we do the uh, the game pick or the update of the game. And here, by listening to the input keyboard input from the user and change the direction, uh, depending on what the user have pressed, we can get a game, actual, actual game, and not just uh, no, some blue boxes moving across the screen. We are adding interactivity to the game. So this is the interface of the grid, and it will just have a width and a height uh, field, and that is the amount of columns and the amount of rows of the grid, and then it will have a meet, set, and a get methods, and they are just initiate, and uh, set and get, they are just pretty self-explanatory. So the snake will be implemented as a queue, with abstract as a queue, and that is described by this keyword here, FIFO, that means first in, first out, and it will contain all the data of the current position in the grid with the snake ID. And it has a direction, which, has, which is controlled by uh, keyboard input, and it's represented in the grid with ID, of course. So here's the interface of the snake, so it has uh, the, the direction, and uh, the last fields here, and that just means the direction and the last pointer is used when we are shifting position in the grid. And then the init, uh, remove and insert methods are just taken directly from the queue interface. Almost. The D here is just to set a uh, uh, direction, uh, initialization, a start direction from the snake. And then the fruit item or food item here is represented only by an ID in the grid, and the position is set randomly by this function set food, and it will set the, uh, the uh, fruit item at a, a random free cell in the grid. And then for drawing and, and graphic representation, we're using HTML canvas, and we're just going to use the field style width and height field fields, and then the context and field rect methods. And for animation, we'll be using the window request animation frame, as is widely supported now, almost in uh, the most, uh, yeah, most of the modern browsers out there. So it will be no problem for us to use uh, request animation frame for this example. Anyway, let's get started by programming our actual game then. So I'm just gonna save a fail file here, save it on, uh, yeah, a map and computer, snake HTML. And in here, just grab some basic HTML5 stuff here, so simple snake game, something like that. And then in the body, all we need is a script tag, more or less. And let's start by specifying some constants. And the only one we need is the number of columns, I guess. So that's 26. We can, of course, set to an arbitrary value you want here. I'm just going to use constant. At six, and then we do need some, we need some IDs, and then we need for empty. I'll set that to zero. And for snake, set that to one, and for the fruit, set that to two, like that. So let's start by making our grid here. Set our width, initiate that to null. The height, initiate that to null as well. And then inside the grid, we need a representation of the grid, and that is this underscore grid stuff here. So let's do a init method and that took a direction and number of columns and number of rows like this. And then did we have a set method of oh, yeah method uh, to val at x and y position 
And lastly, I get the function. And that's just x, y, like so. And then the snake. It will be quite simple to do that as well. So we have that direction. Um, which that more. And then inside of it, we need a queue that here. So set each other more as well. And I then need function method to get direction and a start position here. And then we have the insert method that is to get x and y, like so. And then we remove uh, it took no arguments and like that. And then do we have, I'm just, right now I'm just writing out the boilerplate for our game, if you're wondering. And then we have the uh, function set food, like that, and then we need some game functions. So that will just be a main function, um, and a loop function, update function, I guess. And a uh, lastly a pull function. And in the end of file, make sure you call the main function like that. And I forgot one function here, the init function. Like so. So we can start by implementing our grid constructor. That's quite simple. You just want to set the width to the number of columns here, and the height to the number of rows, of course. And then do we initiate the grid here to empty array. And then do we loop some stuff here as var. Uh, x equals uh, 0. x is less than c, x plus plus, like that. And then do we loop for var y equals 0. y is less than row. Um, then y plus plus, like so. And then here, we just want to push an empty array. In here and then in here we want to set of the current uh, what you say of the current column so that's this x here and then we was going to push in a new value there uh, for each y in that column for each row in that column and we just need to put in the default value here that you set in the parameter or argument to the function to the method sorry like that so that's it for the init method and the set method is really simple, it's just this a grid of a certain position, x and y position, equal to ball, like that. And then for the get, it's simple that also, that just return this grid x and y. Uh, like that. So that's it for the grid data structure. So let's do the snake, and this dot direction equals to d and then do we just say this dot uh, q equals an empty array or empty list and then do we just say this dot insert x and y and I almost forgot the last field here so yeah so in insert is it quite simple it's just this dot q dot unshift that means put at the start of the file and we just put the x object here and the y uh, JavaScript object like that. And then do set this dot last equals this uh, q at zero. And remove here, it will just return this q dot pop. Like that. So that would last for the snake. So let's do the set food here. So we need to track all the empty places of the grid, so we just initiate that empty array, like so, and then do a loop through all the stuff here, so var x equals 0, x is less than grid, no width, x plus plus, and then do we do a not loop here for var y equals 0, y is less than grid dot height, y plus plus, and then do we just say if grid dot get x and y, and y equals to or is empty like that then we say empty dot push uh, x x and y y like 
that and then we will just get rand pos equals um, empty and then we we'll get to get a random element in that array we can just do this so mat.floor mat.random times empty dot length and you can think about it for yourself but that will give us a random empty element and then we just say grid dot set uh, fruit at random pos position dot x and random position dot y so that it for our data structure that represent the game and then here for our these functions work we of course need some game objects um, so we need a canvas I guess and a context and then we need a key state and a frames variable those will be uh, used in a moment but those will do now so to get started just initiate canvas a document let's create element canvas um, like so let's set the width of canvas to the number to uh, the number of columns times 20 I guess let's set the height Mm, if I can spell it right, two number of rows times 20, like that. And this is context to canvas to get context um, to the. And then it's append to so document body dot append uh, child canvas. And then it's called init function and the loop function. And we can actually initiate our frames here as well. So frame set set to zero and the key state to an empty object. Like that. So an init method function, all we want to do is call grid.init. And we of course want to set each of the cells in the grid to empty. And the number of columns and the number of rows again. And then we set stop position here of the snake. Uh, and that will just be map dot dot floor, so we can have both odd and even number of columns divided by two, like so. And the y will be set to rows minus one. And then do we say uh, snake dot init, and we can set the direction variable. We haven't set it, or did we? No, we did not. So let's set some direction here. Um, so that will just be left, uh, up, right, and down. And let's set the starting direction here to up, I guess. And then sp.x and sp.y. So, and we will set a snake at stopsin.x and stopsin.y. Like so. And then of course we want to set the food item. And in the loop, we just want to call the update function and the draw function. And then we will say take this window request uh, anima an animation frame that I was talking about. And that you take the loop and a canvas as a function, a callback function, and a canvas as arguments. So the frames update, we can leave empty for now, we can just increment the frames uh, variable. And in the draw, we need the tag width, so that equals to canvas.width divided by grid.width. And the tie light, that canvas.height divided by grid.height, like so. And then we just loop again, so we can just copy some code from up here, can copy this code out here I guess. So let's do that, like so, and then let's go to the rest inside here. So in here, let's do a switch statement of the grid.get of x and y. And we have all the cases here, so we have case empty, case snake, and case fruit, of course. And all of those, we just want to set the build style to a color. I just set alt white for now. And then we want to break. Don't forget the break there, guys. And then I just change the snake to a cyan color and the fruit to red. 
why not? And I just do a fill rate of uh, x times tile width, y times tile height, and then tile width and tile height. So, like so. so now, if we open this file up, so my project tutorials, and here, if I open this up in a browser, and if I reload the page here, each time this, this food item here will get a new random location. So that is working fine. So let's actually do some updating, shall we? But before we do that, let's add some styling to the page. So let's do that. Canvas here. Let's set the display mode to block. Uh, the position to obsolete. And let's set the border, one pixel. Uh, so with uh, set black and then set the margin and then by setting the margin to uh, zero or two sorry and then setting the top uh, bottom right and left variables here to attribute sorry to zero you will get the uh, canvas centered at the screen middle of the screen yeah so let's do the update. So this is real simple. So just increment the frames here, and then we say if frames modulus five is zero. So each five frames, we want some stuff to run here. So we set a variable here: new x equals to snake dot last dot x, and then we have new y equal to snake dot last dot y, like so. And then we do a switch statement again, of course. But this time of the snake dot direction. And then all the cases here, so we have case left and case up uh, and case uh, right and mostly a case down. So here of course we just want to change the, the, the new x and new y. But the well, a simple mod, uh, uh, pattern if you have set them up. The way I did, just did. So just change each second to n y, and then just add pluses to the end here. And then by set, by taking out the tail here, set that to snake dot remove dot re remove, and then uh, set the grid here. So grid dot set tail uh, to empty. Of the tail dot x and tail dot y. Remember setting the tail of x to nx, tail of y to ny. Remember setting again here to a snake at the, the new tail the x and tail uh, y, like so. And don't forget to put back in the snake, so snake in third here tail dot x and tail y. So now, hopefully, if I've done this right in the load page, the snake will be moving. So yeah, it seems to be working fine. As you can see here, it is going outside of the canvas or the border, and we don't want to do that, so let's fix that real quick. So we just do a simple if statement here. So if 0 is bigger than nx, or nx is bigger than number of columns, or sorry, the grid of width minus 1, or 0 is bigger than ny, or ny is bigger than the grid dot height minus 1, like that. Then we just want to return and it like that. So now, hopefully, if the snake goes outside, yeah, it will reboot the game for us. So that's really good. So, but that's no good. So let's actually be, uh, make it possible for us to control the snake. So to do that, we need some key codes. So let's set it here, so key uh, codes. And I just looked them up on the internet beforehand here. So for left, uh, you can say key left. Uh, that's equal to 37. And then we have key up, and that's equal to 38. Uh, it should be 37, not 27. And then we have a key underline, uh, right here, that's 39. 39 and then we lastly have key down and that's 40. So that's all the key codes we need.
So let's get, get, get down to the main function here and let's um, capture the key state or key code that is pressed. So document dot add uh, event list uh, like so and key down. Let's take a function with an event as root like so. And let's just copy this down like so and change this to key up. I guess and in here we just want to say key state event dot key code equals true and then remove or the key up we just want to remove it so delete key state event dot key code so that's it so now we should have a working capturing of the key states so let's just update the direction of the snake then so here we can just say if key state uh, key left then we want to set the snake dot direction equal to left of course and then just copy this down three times and we can change this to uh, up and uh, if I could yeah and then we have uh, right of course and lastly do we have the down so from now, if I reload it, I should be able to control the snake. Yeah, and that seems to be the case. But as you can see, if I move over the fruit here, nothing will happen. So let's get fix that step, uh, that case right now. So that's really simple. I just say if uh, um, grid dot get nx ny equals to uh, fruit, then we just want to. Uh, set a new foot position so set foot like this so now each time I go over here it should set a new location so that works but the snake isn't growing so let's fix that so then if um, this is the case here if the if the head is on a fruit item then we just want to set uh, a tail item here to a new item with nx and y to ny like so, then we say else statement here, and then we just grab all these up here, I guess, and just tap it in here. And hopefully, now the snake should grow. Yeah, so that seems to be working fine. So, the game it's now finished. It's just one thing, or oh, not finished, uh, if, if I try to hit myself, nothing will happen, so let's fix that also. So that's really simple, it just uh, add a not to if statement here, or a if condition, so that is just if grid.get nx and ny, if that equals to a snake uh, part, then we want the game to reboot again. So now if I try to hit myself, it's going to go a bit bigger, yeah. Now the game rebooted. Mm, and it's, it's just one thing left to fix, I guess, and that is if you move back into yourself, the game will reset also. So to fix that so you don't can move back into yourself or most of the time, uh, at least, then you can just add an uh, and st statement here. So if snake dot dire direction not equals, and then here we can fix put some conditions here, so if the left, you put the right and if you take up, you take the down, so you just take the opposite direction of course so left here, and then here is up so now, I can't be moving inside myself again and that will make the game not as frustrating for users so we can add one final touch to the game, let's add a score system so let's, let's just get down here over the main function and add a score field and then the init, let's set the score to uh, 0 and each time we hit a food item here we can increment the score so score plus plus and then in the draw let's just draw it, so ctx.field style let's set that to black so I can see it 
and see the actual field text. And let's set the score here. So score plus score. And then add some position here. So let's say 10 and then canvas dot height minus 10. So now we have a score in the bottom left corner of this canvas. That's a bit small to see here, so that's in the upside here. Let's set the font. So font equals 12 pixels or something. And let's set held in. Yeah. Uh, you can of course. Yeah, I don't think that was the right spell, but at least it was a bit bigger. So I'm happy. And then, yeah, so that was it, guys. We know how a working snake game. A real simple snake game. Quite fun to play. And it is easy to play around with. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I, next time, I will probably program another game, a uh, Pong game or something like that. And I look forward to see you then. Thank you for watching. Bye.